Hello everybody and welcome to Engineering is Everywhere. My name is Tyler Lay. I'm an Associate Professor of Civil Engineering at Oklahoma State University. We're going to try to cover two topics today. We're going to try to understand and introduce what is engineering and then try to figure out what the engineers do and the different types of engineering. So what is engineering? It's when, when people use math, science, and economics. Really, they, they need to understand all these things. They, they need to understand how things work. They need to understand the math to help to understand how to quantify these things, how to, how to understand these things, how, how to put numbers to these things. And then economics, they need to understand money. They need to understand how to make things practical. Because if we come up with things that people can't use, that's not engineering. Okay? That's not engineering. People have to be able to use them. Our goal is to try to make people's lives better. There's all kinds of different engineers. And um, we're going to talk about e each one of them coming up. And engineers often work in teams. Sometimes they work in teams with other engineers. Sometimes they, they work with, in teams with um, other people. Um, for example, a building. A building may be designed by an architect. An architect may have the idea. They may understand. They, they may work with the people that, that, that are going to use the building, try to understand what it is that they need to do. And then they're, they're going to come with a uh, structural engineer. And an engineer is going to help them make that happen. They're going to find the sizes of the beams, the sizes of, of, of the concrete, how thick it needs to be, what the strength needs to be. They're going to try to help make these ideas happen. <clears throat> and they're going to produce plan sets that help tell the construction workers how to build these things. Notice the team. We have people that have ideas. We have people that try to actually make it happen, actually, actually do the designs, actually find the actual member sizes, and then we have people that construct it. Now that's going to happen over and over and over again um, in different applications. I'm going to first talk about civil engineering. I'm a civil engineer, um, and civil engineering, um, they, they, they design buildings, they design dams, and help, help provide people um, uh, clean water clean and fresh water. They also design cities. They design the, the pavements and the highways in the city, the bridges. They, they, they help the people to understand what's the best way to get from one place in a city to another. They design all the transportation systems, whether that's buses, whether that's bike lanes, whether that's uh, vehicles or, or highways. All that is done by civil engineers. Now, I'm, I'm a special type of civil engineer. I, I, I love materials, and I'm a structural engineer. Um, and so it's, it's common for engineers to specialize. It's common um, for engineers to know a lot about a certain topic. Um, you may have a teacher. Um, that, that, that teacher may teach everything in, in your class, or you may have teachers that teach very specific topics. It's common for engineers to, to, to specialize and be good at certain areas, but not all. Some are, 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 are good at lots of different things. So um, there, there's, there's, there's all ranges. But I'm a person that, that specializes, and I love concrete. Okay, I love concrete. It is the greatest material known to man as far as I'm concerned. It's just amazing, amazing. It's rock, sand, cement, water. You mix it up, this amazing material it gets hard, it gets strong. Now, people make mistakes sometimes. Sometimes they call concrete cement. That's not right. Cement is an ingredient in concrete. Just like flour is an ingredient in bread, it's what holds everything together. Concrete. It's simple, it's inexpensive, it, it actually costs five cents per pound. How many things can you think of are useful in your life that cost five cents per pound? It, it can be formed to be any shape, um, it's strong, it's, it's just awesome. It's just the best ever. Um, and, and, and I'm going to talk a little bit about um, some of the stuff I do with concrete. Um, I'm gonna, uh, I have um, projects where I, I try to um, optimize concrete to, to really save cement. Um, cement costs a lot of money, and, and cement um, also um, is the biggest polluter um, in concrete. So if we can save cement, then that's, that's a big deal. And I'm going to show some pictures here of, of some um, concrete mixtures that, that I've designed and that have actually been used on real projects. And they were sa able to save 10% in cost and about 25% of the carbon footprint. That's, that's great. That, that's, that's how much pollution there is in, in a, in a um, structure or, or an item. And so if we can save money and save pollution, that's, that's awesome. That's, that's really good. So this concrete, actually, as you see, it starts out extremely rocky. 
Okay, it, it, it doesn't look like a concrete that you would want to use to actually build a road with. But once we run it over with this, this, this large paving machine, it, it vibrates it, consolidates it. That means it gets all the air bubbles out and, and pushes it down and it comes out looking nice and smooth. And also notice this concrete stands up on its own. It doesn't need any forms. Okay, it doesn't need anything to hold it in place. It stands up and holds an edge. This is, this is really cool stuff, really cool stuff. Because if you can save on, on things like forms, that's saving costs, that's making your materials easier to use. And that's what engineers do. They make things better, they make it easier to build, they make it cost less, and they make it um, have less pollution. If, if you can do even two of, of, of those things, that would be a great accomplishment. Um, so in addition, um, hopefully sometime in your life you've um, played with Legos. And, and, and right now, when, when we, and, and Legos are neat because they can become pre-assembled. You can pre-put these things together and, and you can stack them to build these big, awesome structures, right? Um, when we build bridges right now, we commonly put the beams up or we put the pieces up, but then we have to pour concrete. We have to build forms for the deck. And, and, and we actually, uh, wood or steel to hold, hold the concrete in place. We have to tie reinforcing steel and then pour more concrete um, into that form. Um, we came up with a system that, that actually is pre-made, okay? It's pre-made, so it, it sh is shipped to the site where parts of the bridge are already pre-assembled. This is called pre-casting. And the concrete's actually made in a factory. Okay. It's brought out to the job site and it's lifted with cranes in place. It's picked up and put in place. Here, here's um, a picture of it, um, a 3D perspective. And it's actually lift up with the crane and put in place and lowered down. Construction workers, is the, they, they actually love this system. It's, it's a whole lot safer. It's a whole lot easier for them to build. It's just a win-win situation for everybody and it's much faster. Here then, putting it in place very easily, very, very easy how, how it just comes down. And after that, they have to put reinforcing steel. They have to put rebar to help hold the concrete together, to help tie everything together. And then they, they, they pour concrete on top of that. And we can build these systems way faster. We can build them in about three to four days. Okay? It, it typically takes around 14 days for um, a bridge to be built, for, for a, a bridge deck to be built. So we can save a lot of time. And in certain places, like cities, time is important. Okay? Time is very important. So that will save us money. In, in, in places where time's not as important, this system's a little more expensive. It's a little different. Anytime you do something different, it's going to be more expensive at first. And so um, this system's used in, in some places where, where people have to build bridges quickly. Okay, so we, we, we talked a lot about me. We talked about what I do. We talked about civil engineering. And now let's talk about other types of engineers. The first slide, mechanical engineers. Mechanical engineers, that they design uh, vehicles like cars, airplanes. I've shown a, a picture of a, of a um, wind turbine. Now, they don't necessarily design the tower part of the wind turbine. That would be maybe you know, a structural engineer. Um, but they would design the, the, the turbine itself, the, the thing that actually spins, the thing that the wind blows through and causes it to spin. They produce electricity. Okay? And in, in the lower right-hand corner, I show a um, power plant. This is where they, they, they burn coal or natural gas. And again, they spin those same, same turbines okay, to produce, produce energy. Now, mechanical engineers can do way more things than this. They, 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 do, they do robots. They do, they do all kinds of different things. And, and um, you need to be careful that, that um, all engineers can kind of have a little bit different job. So it's, it's not like it's the same over and over and over again. And I think that's a great thing about engineering. And then we also have... Um, chemical engineers, and I show some, some, some pictures here, and, and, and in the upper left-hand corner, I show Fritos. Fritos? Chemical engineers, do they make Fritos? Well, they make food. Imagine trying to cook food for a million people, okay? That's a lot of kitchens. They have to do it on a huge scale, on a huge industrial scale. They have to under, uh, understand how to bring in the raw materials, how to process those materials, and how to make it into a final product that people want to use, and one example is Fritos or food. Now this can also be done with oil, okay? Um, it can be done with paints, ink, 
a number of chemicals that, that, that people may need, and that's what chemical engineers often do. They focus on these processes, taking raw materials and turning them into something that, that, that people um, will, will want to use. So I've shown uh, pictures of, of um, oil, oil well drilling, um, petroleum engineers, um, and, and um, chemical engineers often work close, um, uh, closely together. And then I'm showing this huge conveyor belt of all this food coming down. And again, this is this, this, this process that they have to go through. Electrical engineers. Electrical engineers often design um, computers, you know, like iPads, smartphones, thing, things like that, televisions. Anything that involves um, electricity are things that they're interested in and, and, and um, can definitely work on. Materials engineers. Now, um, I'm, I also work on uh, understanding materials. Materials are very, very important when it comes to construction. And so I'm showing all kinds of, all kinds of different uh, materials that, that they, they, they look at in uh, different depths. It's important for materials engineers to really look and understand these materials on a microscopic scale, on a very, very, very small scale. Um, so I'm showing plastics, I'm showing metals, ceramics, concrete's a ceramic, um, all kinds of different materials. It's important to understand them on a very, very small scale. Materials engineers often do that. And finally, industrial engineers. Now, industrial engineers are, are very tied to streamlining processes, really making processes easier and faster and better and um, less expensive. So this may be, you know, an assembly line. When they start out with, with, with a car at the beginning, they may understand, they may design the assembly line. Okay? Now, mechanical engineers may supply the robots, you know, but they would design the processes with the steps that are actually taken, the order that, that, that they're actually taken in. Um, believe it or not, amusement parks often use industrial engineers. I'm, show, I'm showing Disney down here as, as a great example of where, where they would use an amusement park, or they would use industrial engineers to help them understand how people move and flow through, 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 through the park, um, help them understand and, and, and um, design their, their, their paths, that, that they actually walk on, how long their, uh, their, their lines are, all kinds of things like that are done by industrial engineers. So as you can see, there's lots and lots and lots of things that engineers do, and we need more engineers. We need lots of engineers. Um, and I, I love being an, an engineer. I really do. Now, previously, um, your teacher should have given you some pens and had you do things to them. Have them really try to figure out how they work. And here, here's one um, right here. Uh, so hopefully she talked about, or, or he talked about a, a, a piece of the part, a, a clicker, a part that you, that, that you push on, or, or a plunger, okay, that, that actually pushes the pen down. There's the body of the pen, that's where the ink is contained, and that's where the uh, writing part is. And then there's this spring at the top. Now, something as simple as a pen, something that we use every day, is actually really complicated. It's really complicated. There's a lot of engineering that goes into this pen, a whole lot of engineering. Now, one piece that I'm going to talk more about is the cartridge. And this is the part that also has this, this that, that you write with. Okay? And if we focus in very, 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 very close to, to this tip, we'll actually find um, that um, it looks like this. It's actually um, has a ball in the end. Okay, and there's a container that actually holds this ball. And I'm showing a cross section in this, in, in this corner. And, and the cross section is really like a cut through um, a drawing or through an object so you can kind of look inside of it. It's kind of like seeing it, having x-ray vision. It's, it's really cool. So anyway, you take this pen and um, to write with it, I'm showing a ball here, an ink, and a paper. And then this thing holds the ball in place. And as you push down, as you put the pen on top of the paper and push down on it, the ball moves upwards and the ink starts to come around the ball. Okay? It actually coats the ball and goes down on the surface of the paper. And as you move, um, as you push the ball across the surface, it actually wets the surface. The ink actually comes out and wets it. And the reason this was in, you know, actually invented was because the old ways we used to write with pens were, were just not very fun. They're just not very good. We had to use quills or we had to use these tips that you would dip in ink and then you would start to write with. 
dip in ink and start to write with. You would hope to not to drop it. You'd hope to not to spill the ink. It was, it was just kind of a problem. Um, so when, when folks started to actually go up in, 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 in airplanes, um, the military needed ways that we could write things down with ink that, that, that wouldn't cause drops, wouldn't cause spills. I mean, what if you went upside down in an airplane? The ink would go everywhere, right? So they, 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 they funded people and helped people develop the ballpoint pen. And, and the way this works, again, is that as you push up, the ball goes upwards, the ink goes around the ball, and you move it over the surface, and it actually writes. It actually writes on the surface. It's pretty cool. I mean, something as simple as a ballpoint pen has quite a bit of, of, of engineering in it. Well, um, thank you so much for, for being here today with us. And, and, and now I want you to actually go and partake in a really fun activity. I want you to go through a scavenger hunt. I want you to go through your school and I want you to try to find different engineering. I want you to not only find the engineering, but I want you to figure out what type of engineer did, th did that. Thank you so much for being here. Take care.